people should get notified. Just waiting for that little pop-up. Oh, there it is. Hey. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Don't mind all the spam already starting here in the feed. <laughs> Say hello and where you're from. Maybe there's somebody nearby that you don't even know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. If someone could, like, please report these people that are literally spamming non-stop. That would be awesome. <laughs> but but yeah, please don't click those links um, that they click, uh, that they post on here. So <laughs> welcome. So I'm, I'm Megan from Painting with Megan. I'm so happy to have you all here tonight. So thanks for tuning in, whether you are staying here to paint or if you're just coming on to say hello or watch and doing it later. Totally welcome for everything. Um, this painting is great for all ages, beginners to intermediate. <laughs> so welcome. Hi. Oh, I'm starting to see some regular comments. Hey. <laughs> hi, good evening. And hey. Oh, hi, Janet. Hi, Therese. Nancy from New Hamburg. Okay, cool, cool. You're near me. Hi, Jill. Tonya, Heather. Oh, welcome. Welcome, everybody. If you're new to my page, hello, and so happy to have you here. <laughs> From Ohio, that's cool. New Jersey, Australia, so cool. It must be like 2 a.m. over there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Awesome. I'll show you the painting. There it is. Countryside. So I'm in... Um, Listwell, which is like northwest of Kitchener, um, in Ontario, Canada. So I was inspired by the country scenes around me that I had painted this. And I thought this painting is um, really fun because there's some sponging involved with this. So basically all of this like grass mass here that you see is literally just a sponge. So I'm going to show you today how to create this beautiful field with just a sponge and a couple brushes, but mostly a sponge. <laughs> so now that I see more of you coming on, oh, hey, love Listwell. Oh, yes, cool. You know Listwell, yeah. <laughs> um, Sydney, cool. Sydney, Australia, Tennessee. Oh, people from all over. This is so exciting. I love it. Thanks for joining. <laughs> so I'm just going to go over some of the um, paint colors tonight and the brushes that I'll be using and then we'll get started and that way people can Have some time just to find me because sometimes it's a little tricky to find um, the live and Yes, I do record um, All of the lives that I do are automatically recorded and uploaded on my page So you'll find them right in the video section as soon as I'm done It'll be there for you to use at any time so if you can't watch the whole thing today then you're Welcome to watch it later on. So tonight I am using um, Liquitec Basics Paint. Um, so this is one of the colors I have. So just some regular titanium white. I have black. And I have some yellow. Um, it's called cadmium Yellow Medium. Any yellow is fine. Don't worry if you don't have these exact colors. Um, I have... Um, an acrylic Amsterdam brand here. It's called Napoleo Red. <laughs> I can't say it, but this is the red that I'm using. So again, any red is fine. I'm also using green. The basics brand, it's called Deep Green Permanent. So maybe just kind of like a medium green that you have. If you have a darker, a medium, and a light green, then perfect. You have it all. <laughs> And I also have blue here. It's just called Cobalt Blue. New York. Oh my goodness, this is so cool. I love that we're all here together. I also put in the description that I had a bonus color called Yellow Orca. So this is in the Amsterdam brand and I did put a link to it. But basically Yellow Orca is like a mix of like brown and yellow. So if you don't have that, that's totally fine. You don't need it. I only put it in like... A couple spaces in the painting this is yellow orca here so that's what it looks like when it dries and a little bit over here so you could use that with brown and yellow as well it's no problem 
And of course, I have brown. <laughs> hi, hi. Oh, so, so cool that everyone's here. I am going to try my best to keep up with these comments. So um, don't mind if I miss you, just say something again. Yeah, I know. If somebody could like, please report them, that would be great. Because I can't report them while I'm live. Um, before I went live, I was busy actually like um, deleting those comments and like banning them banning them from my page because they just keep coming and they I don't know where they get all these usernames from so but yeah please never click those links I'm so sorry that there's like so much spam going on in these lives it seems like lately it's like I don't know how they find you but they just keep on spamming so so sorry about that <laughs> anyways we won't let them ruin our painting fun tonight so like I said, I'm using acrylic paints. Um, as for brushes, I have a flat brush, I have a round brush, and a filbert brush. So just a nice variety. And yes, this will be recorded and posted on my page after. Thank you for reporting them. <laughs> um, the sponge I'm using is called a sea sponge. So it's just one that I bought at like Walmart. It just has a bunch of holes in it. But any sponge, like even just like a sponge for your dishes, just maybe cut it in half so it's a little smaller. You can just use any sponge like that. Or if you don't have a sponge, I was going to tell you guys that you can actually use a brush that looks like this. Something that's just like really crazy looking, like very old and frailed. This is an alternative to a sponge. So if you don't have one, you're go ahead and use this one. Thank you. Thanks, Kaylee. <laughs> They're just crazy tonight. They're spamming, spamming. <laughs> okay. So as I go along, I will be teaching you this painting step by step. Um, and if you have any questions or need any clarifications, just please leave a comment and let me know what your question is. Um, let me know as well if I'm going like too fast and I'll try my best to slow down. I'm going to try to envision myself there with you all and go out of at a pace that will suit um, whether you're a beginner or an intermediate. Um, and yeah, as we go along, I'll just say like, give me like a heart or thumbs up and that'll let me know um, to move forward with the step. So I'm ready to paint if you all are. So I'm, again, thank you for tuning in. Oh, love you too. Thank you. Thanks girl. <laughs> um, I think to report, you just like click um, their name and then you just press report. I'm not too sure to be honest <laughs> that's a great question <laughs> okay so yeah I do have a cup of water and a napkin of course so the canvas size I'm using tonight is actually 11 by 14 I put in the description 12 by 16 but again it really doesn't matter what size you use so any size canvas is great or paper whatever you got so I'm gonna put this up here and I have the canvas ready Awesome, so I'm going to get going and get started. So I'm going to use my flat brush here, and it's kind of like a relatively large size. Yes, it'll be available later. And I'm going to dip this brush into water. I'm dipping in the water, I'm just giving my cup a little tap there. And then I like to dab on the napkin so that way it's not like super soaked. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply some water first on this clean canvas. Now this is something I've been doing lately. So if you've been watching me, you will know that I like to prime my canvas and I usually just paint the whole canvas white. But this time, because there's some blending involved, I want to just actually wet my canvas. So I'm just going back and forth just like this and using some water and wetting that canvas. Now I know it seems weird. But when we apply some paint next, it'll help keep that wet. So the wetter it is, the easier it'll be for blending that side. Oops. Actually, I don't think I'll be able to keep that up there because it's going to tip over. So don't worry, I'll be showing you. <laughs> okay, so just wet that. Don't make it soaked or anything. Just kind of spread it around. And then the very first color we're going to need is some white. So you can go ahead and put some white out on your palette. So I'm just using this old palette tonight here, my wooden palette, and I just put up some white. Okay, and I'm still using that flat brush. 
and I'm just dipping it into the white with both sides, evenly pressing the paint. Okay, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to go back and forth and I'm going to cover um, half of my painting white today because that is where our sky is going to be, which is our beautiful sunset. So I'm just going back and forth with the white here and I am putting it on quite thickly so that way, again, it'll stay wet, which is going to be much easier for blending. So I'm just going back and forth and let me know if you can like see and hear me okay as well. There we go. So just back and forth and we're doing this halfway. So somewhere around there, about halfway. <laughs> okay, so my half of my canvas is white and I know you cannot see it and you're probably wondering why we're painting it white but that is to prime. So you'll see now when we apply color, it's actually going to be um, going on this canvas so easy for you and it'll like be very um, easy to blend. So I'll show you that. Oh good, okay. <laughs> I just wasn't sure because all these like spam things keep coming up. So just wasn't sure. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So now that I got white on half my canvas, I'm going to get out some of my blue. So I'm using cobalt blue, but any blue is totally cool. So I just put out some blue on my palette. And I didn't clean off this brush because there's white on here anyways, and we don't have to worry about it drying. So I'm dipping that brush into a part of my blue here and just going back and forth to coat the brush. Just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to do apply the blue to about three fingers length on my canvas. And I'll be going from one side of the edge all the way to the other. Okay, so back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until I reach to the other side. And then you can even just go like this and pull it across. You can also use a little bit of water to help you move it around, depending if it is moving or not. So I'm just going back and forth. Because it is wet underneath, it's going to create a little bit of some nice light blue areas, which is awesome because that just gives us different variation in the sky. So see how I keep going back and forth over and over? That is what really helps soften and smoothen that background. So anytime I apply paint, it's a little tricky on the edges. So sometimes I pull down and then I go across just to smoothen it. There we go. And if you need to add a little white to your blue, you know, if it's not, um, you know, if your white is already dried, which acrylics, if you're using them, they do dry pretty quickly. So, <laughs> so about three fingers length of blue. So, yep, about there is good. Okay, and then just go back and forth until the desired blending smoothness. <laughs> I could keep doing this all day. <laughs> there we go. All right. Doing good. Okay, so we're actually going to clean that brush off. All right, so it's cleaned off there. And I just want to freshen up the white because it looks like it's drying on me. So now what you're going to do is I just have that clean brush with white on my flat brush. And that was that looked kind of chunky on there so I'll just kind of smoothen it out there we go so white is on my brush and I'm going to apply the white just where it kind of meets from the blue area to the sky underneath and just 
um, we'll tie in the blue so it helps to blend it in. So I'm just going over that just a little bit back and forth. So the next color that's going to be there is some red and white. So there's a little bit of blue here, but then I applied my white and just kind of hid any, basically what I'm saying is you just want to kind of hide any like distinct line there that you can tell like, whoa, there's blue. And then you just kind of want it to look like gradually um, for the sunset that we'll create. So next you're going to need some red on your palette. I'll just put up some red there. And I'm not going to clean the brush because I'm going to make some light pink. So the next part of the sky that I'm creating is this nice, like kind of soft pastel tone pink. So I'm just tapping that, um, my brush into the red and I'm going to add a little more white to that. So I'm just making like a nice kind of pale pink. So it's mostly white with like a little bit of red. And you can, you can um, mix this until there's a color that you like, but to make like that pastel tone, I'm really um, making like a nice light pink, but I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow to it. So once I have light pink and I'm going to pick up my yellow and I'm literally just going to add like a tiny little um, bit into it. So I just put it onto the side so you can see there and then I'll scoop that up and I'll just mix that in and then that creates that nice pastel pink tone. There we go. If you need me to repeat that, let me know. <laughs> Basically it's light pink. So, you know, mostly white, a little bit of red. And then I added like a tiny drop of yellow and then I mix that in and kind of seeing what it looked like. And if I kind of lost that red, then you could just add like a tiny bit more of red. Okay. So that's the color there. So I'm going to do that. Um, so imagine this white area here between the blue. Um, here's going to be some clouds. So we're going to go, we're going to leave a little bit of a space here. And we're going to start to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth just like that until you get to the other side. I'm going to dip a little bit of water and then just mix it in here with my paint just so it'll move a little bit smoother for me because especially that this is drying. <laughs> so back and forth. And this is about, again, about three fingers width because right underneath is going to be that nice yellow um, color here. So I'll just show you. So next will be yellow here. And then we're going to be applying the water. Okay, so it's kind of back and forth. Sometimes I like to give it a little tap. Just sometimes there's like those little see through spots on the canvas. So sometimes if you tap it and then go back and forth, it'll help fill it in. Or you might just need more paint. <laughs> I got this new easel, so I'm just getting used to it. It was actually from a friend of mine, so thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's what I have there. Awesome. I see some thumbs up. <laughs> Just going to add a little bit more kind of here. All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to clean out that brush and we're just going to get out some yellow paint. So I'm just putting out yellow. So 
still going to use the same brush and just cleaning it off. And if you don't have white, still get out some white too, okay? <laughs> so I'm putting out some more white. So I got white and yellow. So I'm going to take some white and I'm going to apply it into my yellow here. Mixing it around, I'm just creating like kind of like a pastel tone yellow. Something a little softer and less bright. And if you want it to be brighter, I mean, you're more than welcome, of course. <laughs> In the end, this is your painting and I'm a guide. <laughs> okay, so now to that halfway point, so about here, that's where we're going to end. So you're just going to paint yellow across here and you're going to want to go right on top of that pink color you have. So that way there's no lines. You see that? How I went literally right on top. You'll create a little bit of an orange tinge up above, which is awesome. And then you just go back and forth in that area and that'll help smooth it. So you won't see any line. You don't want a line to show you that this is pink, this is yellow, right? Like. If that's happening, you can take just some white and you can even just kind of smoothen that out um, with a little bit of white on top of those, like if you see a line and that'll help um, kind of tone it down a bit. <laughs> there we go. I just added a little more white to my yellow because it was kind of bright for me. <laughs> there we go. And I forgot to say, do your sides of your canvas if you are having sides to do. If you have canvas like this, I always forget. So <laughs> I end up literally having a day where I sit down and I paint sides of my canvases. And I usually paint the sides of my canvases black because I like to give it like a frame. I just think it makes the painting pop out. <laughs> But yeah, sometimes I'm just spending a day literally painting sides of canvases, so maybe do yours now. <laughs> okay, so there's our sky. So we're actually just going to work on a little bit of clouds here, just to kind of cover up some some lines if they're going on there, right? Um, and then we're going to put in our water. Okay, so I'm going to use the flat brush still, and I'm going to have just white on it so you can clean it off. And just put some white on the flat brush and we'll get ready for clouds. So in the original here, I have some clouds up here. So that's what we're gonna do next. All right, thumbs up and hearts, awesome. Okay, so what we're gonna do for clouds is we're gonna take this brush and I'm gonna imagine the camera is the canvas and I'm just going to tap it and I'm gonna start to Twirl it around and kind of drag it around. So I'm using pressure as well. So it's literally tapping and using that pressure. You can hear it. And I'm just literally swirling around making a cloud. And that hides any lines. And you're welcome to do clouds in other areas. And if you don't want to do a cloud in a certain area, then you don't have to. This isn't the brush's best friend, but this is an, an effective way to make clouds. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Still in, still are in here. <laughs> okay, so I'm just using white tapping and spreading it around. I am going up into the blue, as you can see, because I don't want it just to be a white clouded area here. You do want this cloud to kind of have shape, right? So swirl it around, push it around, blending it in by swirling and pushing, and that will really help to create these nice kind of faint clouds that are back there. They may need another coat or two if they're not quite showing up. Oh, thanks. Hey, Jenny. Long time no see. <laughs> so hard now, eh? With the crazies. <laughs> So how is everybody doing? 
I'm going to give my cloth just a second coat now that it's dried a little because, you know, acrylics dry very fast. So now I'm starting to give my clouds different shapes. You know, I went up a little bit here, but maybe, you know, maybe now I'm going to go down a little bit in this area. And it's pretty random, right? Like clouds are pretty random. They just kind of float literally wherever they want and they do whatever they want. So just let your brush do what it wants. <laughs> Okay, and twirl around and have fun with it. <laughs> but don't go crazy. Like, take a step back and be like, do I have too many clouds or something? Because that can happen too. <laughs> there, so that is going to be good. It's also easy to want to keep doing it. So I'm just kind of talking myself out of not doing too much more. Because I don't want to overdo it. So yeah, there we go. I like that. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I love to do it. I love to teach. I honestly didn't think that I would ever teach people how to paint. So, cause I used to be like, when I first started, um, I didn't even let anybody watch me paint. Like I've been, I'm a self-taught artist and I've been painting now for like at least 10 years. But like in the beginning, literally I didn't want anybody to watch me. It was like, don't watch me. And I don't even know what changed. Like I, I moved um, to Listful and I thought there's like no art classes here. And I just really loved art. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to teach classes because, you know, we all need art in our life. <laughs> That's my little story there for you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was. <laughs> But you got to step out of your comfort zone, you know? <laughs> I'm glad that I did. Skies are hardest. Yeah, how do you feel like this is going for you? Melissa, do you, do you need me to explain anything um, again? I wish I could, like, see it. <laughs> but you're welcome to send me a photo of your art, too, if you ever want, like, any tips for your skies. Totally cool with that. And for anybody. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. Oh, good. I'm so glad you guys like my story. <laughs> I've been wanting to like share my, my, like how I got started. Maybe I'll do a video on that. Perfect. All right. So we got our sky, beautiful sunset. Now we're going to do the bottom. There's like a nice um, stream going here. So that's what we're going to do next. So we're going to need the same colors. So maybe if you're lucky, you still have them kind of here. Um, but if you don't, that's okay. Cause I'm literally going to tell you how to do it again. Um, yeah, you could use clouds or sponges for clouds. Yeah, you could do that. Um, if you were doing that, just tap it. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to use that flat brush again. I love this flat brush lately. I'm just cleaning it off and we're going to get white out. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to wet this canvas again. And we're just only maybe the middle here. Just about the middle. Actually, no, let's do the whole thing in case. So we're going to do the whole bottom half now with white. So we're just priming it and getting it ready. I'm just putting out some fresh white here. Oh, yeah, and I'm actually watching it, but not able to be in my studio. Yes, hope you get to, right? Yeah, that's so cool. I'm so happy everybody's watching. Hi, I'm new all to this. Love the way you do the sky, because I struggle, and I'm going to try your way. Perfect, yeah, let me know how it goes. You got this. We all have our own way of painting. We just don't know it. <laughs> Okay, so fresh white, just paint the whole bottom again white. You can go over your sky color here too, like a little bit of that yellow. Just soften it, right? Anytime you put anything to do with blending, you just put a little bit on top of the color you already had and just move it back and forth. I'm also going to use a little bit of water and then add it to my white and then apply it just to keep it wet. Again. And this also is nice too for later. You don't have like see-through spots on your canvas as much because there's something 
for the paint to grab onto besides just the canvas. <laughs> First time watching you. Yeah, so it'll be available later on on my page. I do have a YouTube channel. Um, I don't post much to it, but I should. I can definitely start to... I do want to get in that process of uploading my videos from Facebook to YouTube so that way they are accessible in other areas. But they're all available on my Facebook page here um, and you can watch them at any time. So my goal is to get them on YouTube as well. So thank you for reminding me. <laughs> um, you're welcome. Will this be available later? Yes, it is right in the video section and you're struggling, Sally, I'm struggling. I think I'm struggling with clouds. Okay. So what is it that you feel like you're struggling with, with them? Just let me know. Try to describe it as best you can. <laughs> and Oh, you're welcome, Bonnie. Cool. From Michigan. Where is your page? Um, just on Facebook. So it's just painting with Megan on Facebook. M-E-G-A-N. <laughs> Ooh, so the brand of paint that I use is Basics Brand. I buy that at Michael's. Um, I'm not sure if Michael's is available all over the country, but it is online. <laughs> Liquitex Basics is what I use. Oh, you're welcome. I know everybody's on different schedules and, you know, we all have crazy lives. <laughs> I also enjoy Amsterdam with the blending. So maybe let it dry. Um, okay, so you're struggling with the blending. Oh, I wish I could see, um, see them. Try to describe what the problem is and then I can try to help you. <laughs> but later on, like, you're welcome to send me a photo of it and I can try to help you that way too. I just can't receive photos, I don't think, live. So... Awesome. So many people that are new here. I'm so happy that you guys are tuning in. I'm just going to actually like make sure that this is still wet. So I'm just using some water and mixing it with white here on my palette. And I'm just going back and forth on this just to have it wet. Because that's what we'll want to apply our colors to. Okay, so. And for blending, like the wetter it is, the easier it is, right? Like. If it's all dried up, then it can be harder to blend. Yes, yeah, see? Yes, Sharon, if I add a touch of water, it blends well, you got it. Okay, um, I won't be able to view your photo, Colin, because I am live, so I, if I exit, then I could I lose everybody, and I don't want to do that, but I can view it after. It works good for me with enough water. Yep, you got it. Good, good, good. It takes practice. And it also depends on your environment where you're painting. Because acrylics dry very quickly. So if it's like really humid in your room or cold or like there's a breeze, it's going to dry on you faster. So keep that in mind too. All right. Well, let's not let this dry because we'll need that wet for our blending. So make sure it's wet. Just put a little water on it. A little more white paint. Just make sure it's kind of wet. So what we're going to do now is we're going to pull our sky colors to the little river stream. So the first one is going to be the blue. Maybe mix it with a little bit of white just in case. If you just have any left there. Okay, so a little bit of the blue. <laughs> okay, yeah, no problem. All right, so this is where... I'm I'm going to imagine my river and I'm going to be going to my left. I know it's backwards for you guys, I'm pretty sure, but I'm going to the left. doesn't matter where you go, to be honest. So I'm taking the flat brush and I like the flat brush for this. So what you do is you just go back and forth with the, the little edge of your brush and you just go back and forth like this and start to go on an angle. So basically we're thinking of going on an angle to the other corner here. So it's just kind of like, whoop, and it's going to go on an angle. So if I just use my brush like this and basically use the size of my flat brush and just move it, smoothing it down. So let's say about here's good with blue. 
I kind of just went up a little bit. I go up a little bit into it just to kind of help blend it out. Just like that. Okay, and I'll just kind of show you the original too so you can see the direction I'm going. So I'm starting to go like this. Okay. Yes, no problem. It'll be up for you as soon as I am done. Paint it later on. It's no worries. Okay, so I'm going to say about here is good with blue. And now that you have this, just kind of take your brush. Don't add any blue to it and just soften what you do have. Okay. I'm just going to get out some white because I'm running out. So now you're going to need yellow and red out on your palette. If you have it still, then you don't need to do it. So I am just adding a little bit of white to my brush here. And while this is blue is wet, I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to add in a couple of like just white kind of water lines. So I'm just kind of using um, just the edge of my brush. And I just added a couple of these like little kind of water lines. Can you guys see that okay? <laughs> Use your flat brush to your advantage. The flat brush made these for me because it is flat and if I have it and I just use that edge, I can just literally pull out the the river. <laughs> it's got red on it. So all I did there was I added just a tiny bit of white water shimmers basically um, very randomly. And if you need to, like use a smaller flat brush. Like if you have one that's smaller, I just always paint with giant things. So, um, I'm just used to that. But if you had like a flatter, um, flat brush, but it was smaller, that could work too. So maybe, um, use that if you have it. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of our sky colors here. So first let's make that kind of pinky peach color. So it's a little bit of red, mostly white. Oops, sorry, I don't think I was in the camera. Okay, mostly white and then a tad of yellow. Just do that till you get about the same color. Now remember, if it's not exact, that's okay because it's a reflection. And, you know, reflections in water is literally, it's never going to be exactly the same. Because it's kind of distorted. Um, am I dry brushing a little bit? Um, I use the paint on my brush first and then I just kind of spread it around until it gets a little drier, but it is initially wet because um, if it's wet here, it's going to be easier for blending. So now I'm going to make down here just a little bit wider. So I'm just kind of going like this back and forth and it's up to you like the kind of the size of your river. If you need to, you can always come back up here and balance it out. So I'll try, I'm just trying to go ahead. I might be going a little faster. I'm just trying to show you what kind of shape it is. Um, so you know what to, like, what to see. <laughs> so after I did that, then I just am going to dip into just direct yellow. And I'll just kind of finish it off there with that back and forth technique. And basically the bottom of the water is going to be the widest because it's closest to you. And up here is going to be smaller because it's further away. So I basically kind of think of it like, you know, a pyramid in a way, but not exactly straight or anything. Okay, so I just kind of went ahead a little bit there just so you could see. <laughs> There's the river. You can just add literally some yellow kind of into your pinks. Like water is very distorted. So even if you put pulled some like kind of pink up here in your blue a little bit, that's good too. Just like more of the color variety in this, the better. Because it's just showing that, you know, it's reflecting. I'll try to bring it closer. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white here because I find like it's kind of too yellow there. So this is kind of like that base. Now you can 
start to add in other colors. I'm just going to add some white. Today was such a beautiful day here, like in Ontario, um, where I am anyways. It was like 24 degrees, which is really, really nice and very rare for this time of year. So that was pretty awesome. I'm actually like kind of hot because, you know, today was like I could wear shorts. <laughs> like my house was like had the heater on and it was like, ooh, too hot. <laughs> What brand did I use do the most? Um, Basics in Amsterdam. Liquitex Basics in Amsterdam are my two f favorites. I just started to try out Windsor Paint too. I like them, but I'm still really liking um, Amsterdam and Liquitex Basics. Okay, so how's your river going? I'm just going to kind of soften it down here, put a couple like little kind of white water shimmers just very randomly. I'm just using the edge, the very side edge of the brush. Make sure you pull up some of it into these other areas just a little bit. Just as long as up here is smaller and down here is wider, that is good. <laughs> and I'm going to actually just kind of widen this a little bit with some of my blue area here. Making it a little bit wider. Just kind of in this part, not near the top, because <laughs> then that will throw off everything. <laughs> there we go. Takes a little bit of playing with this blending area. So if you have questions, just let me know. <laughs> Right now it looks weird because there's just like this and then there's no land, but it'll it'll make sense. Plus, you're going to be using like the sponge and we're going to be going up to the edges of the water um, and pulling in a little bit of green into here too. So it'll look really cool when it's done. And I'm just using my finger to kind of soften some areas. Helps blend a little more too. If you're wondering, what am I doing? <laughs> The paint is pulling so that would be too wet oh yeah curvy's fine don't worry if there's a part of your river too like once we're putting in our grass part if you cover part of your river that's fine you can totally do that <laughs> so yeah if it's pulling on you eva um, that just means that the paint is too wet. So just give it a couple seconds, especially if it's acrylics. It should dry on you fast. And um, then you can just apply another coat. So, yeah, it's just too wet. I know, it's kind of a game. Like, you need water to make water, right? This river here. Um, and especially with acrylics, to keep it wet and to blend. But it's just finding that happy medium. So it all takes practice. So don't don't worry, you'll get it. <laughs> what kind of acrylics do I use? Yeah, so that is Liquitex Basics. And I also like to use Amsterdam. Those are my two faves. <laughs> okay, so with the river, kind of like, let me know if you're done or if you're still working on it. I'm just using a little bit of a smaller flat brush just to even get in some like kind of white water lines here and there and that just kind of helps blend too and helps tie in certain things. Adding a couple white shimmers can really make a difference sometimes. So. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Just, I just was letting mine dry a couple seconds too because it was a little bit kind of pulling as well. One area I just used too much water as well. <laughs> it happens. There we go. And between the blue and this part, if it's blended, um, or if it's not, like if it's looking too blue and then too pink here or like yellowish, just add those white um, shimmers to this area just to kind of break it up and even, even um, apply like a little bit of that... Um, kind of the pinks or the um, 
yeah, the pinks because not yellow because it'll turn green. And that way, um, it just helps show that it's blending naturally, right? It's, it's the flowing river um, instead of it being like, this is blue and this is pink, right? <laughs> I just got both there. Yeah, yeah, I really like them because they are the acrylic brand, like the basics brand and the Amsterdam brand. They just aren't too thick and they're not too thin, which is great. So they're really good for practicing. Kind of stepping up and buying, like they say, like the next one up would be like Windsor. So like I've been practicing with that. And I find that this one is actually thinner than my basic brand. So I actually still like my basic brand. <laughs> so Whatever paint you like. <laughs> okay. So then we're going to move on to the land. So just let me know if you have questions about the water, or, um, et cetera. And we're going to need that sponge out now. I'm just grabbing a drink. <laughs> Don't stay hydrated. <laughs> okay. So we're going to need some of our greens out or browns and our blacks. So we're going to get out black. <laughs> we're just going to lay out our colors. So I'm just putting out a little bit of black. Can you see that? Yeah, it's up there. I am getting out my green. It's kind of like a medium green. Kind of running out of space <laughs> on my palette. So I'm getting out some new fresh yellow, some wine. Yeah, get out some wine, have a break with wine. No, no wine for me tonight. <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> and then I'm also getting out that bonus color, which is yellow ochre. But don't worry if you don't have it, because you can just make it with brown and yellow anyway. So it looks like this. It's kind of like a... I don't even know how to describe it. Color. But if you have something similar to that. Kind of like hay. Looks like hay. <laughs> Okay, I'm getting a brown as well. It's got my brown. Oh, there it is. So, so far I have green, a uh, little bit of black, some yellow, yellow ochre, and brown. And yes, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it looks like mustard. Yes, that's a great word for it. Great description. Okay, so this is my sea sponge. I'm actually going to be putting that in the water. So I'm dipping my sponge in the water. Spicy mustard. <laughs> I'm squeezing out my sponge. So it's kind of get kind of messy now. Sorry, but so I put my sponge in the water and I just wring it out. So you don't want it to be soaking. So really make sure you wring this sponge out. <laughs> okay, you just want it to be damp. All right, so it's nice and damp. We're going to start putting on, so this, um, the grass here, um, the field has, oh, oh my gosh, I just dropped my palette, um, has many different layering to it, so we'll build it up. Okay, good. My colors are still there. <laughs> my new easel takes up a lot of space that I'm used to. Okay. So I'm just going to go wipe my floor there one second because I don't want that to like um, stain my wood. <laughs> okay. Alright. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is why I don't need one. <laughs> Alright, let's start with this basic green. So just that good old green color here with the sea sponge. And we're just going to be tapping into the color. So it's going to use quite a bit of paint, by the way. Okay, so I just tap into, you know, one corner of it, one section of it. I have a pretty big sponge, so I just used one part of it. And I just tapped. Okay, so now we're going to, let's start on, let's start in the smaller area here on my left side. So all you do for the sponging is you literally just start to tap. So I'm just tapping, and look at that. It's already looking like grass, like bushes. It sure can. You can view it as soon as I am done. 
It'll be right here on my page. I'm going to try not to block this with my head. But I'm just tapping along and I am moving up a little bit um, into the sky just to create, you know, illusion of trees far away. And when I get close to the water, so sometimes I like to kind of push in my sponge to take up space. And I'm just getting out more green because we're going to need a lot of colors, so. <laughs> or a lot of paint, I mean. Okay. I always tap my sponge on my palette before the canvas so that way it's not built up with a bunch of paint. So when you get close to your water, you just kind of start to tap a little bit into it. It's kind of like this. So I took my sponge and just used a little bit of the edge and just tapped a little bit into it. Okay, like that. And then what you're going to do is just get out any brush you have lying around, just wet it. I'm going to just grab this random filbert brush. And anytime your um, grass area here from the sponge touches near where the water edges, you're going to want to just slightly pull a, that color out. So then it looks like it's part of the water and the reflection. Okay, so I just took that brush and I just simply pulled it into the water. Okay. So I'm just going to cover this whole area with just green and we'll, we'll add other colors in as we go. So I'm just tapping away. I am using quite a bit of paint. So I maybe do a row and then I get more paint. And you can kind of just go a little bit around your edge like that. And maybe sometimes you go a little bit into the water, you know, because grass likes to grow where it wants. This is a wild field, so. <laughs> yeah, this thing is still taking some getting used to. Anyways, keep tapping. I'm not blocking it. No, okay. <laughs> There's one section, look at that. Take that brush and make sure it's just a little bit damp and just slightly pull some of that paint color into your water. You don't even have to do it in all the spots. It can just be random just to show that there's reflection of this bushy field area. <laughs> Oh, you didn't know about the class. Oh, you're just tuning in. <laughs> That's okay. I do have the videos that stay up. So you can watch it later. There we go. So there is one side, but we're going to be adding some more colors to this. So this is just the base. We'll work on this side and then we'll go over here. This will be good practice for us. <laughs> okay, so you guys doing good there? We're going to have this sponge color now, but we're going to actually dip a little bit into the black. So I just literally tap a little bit into the black. Okay, and then I'm into the green. So black to green. Okay, I'm just tapping around. I always tap on the palette, like I said, before I go to the canvas, because if I just dipped and then went here, it's going to be kind of chunky. So it's easier to kind of tap it on there first on the palette okay so let's make it a little bit darker over here because this is where the sun is so it's going to be a little bit um darker here because it's you know a little bit of a shadow area um it'll be a little brighter in this area so i'm just going to start to apply if it's looking too black then you just need to add some green to it so that is looking too black for me so i'm just taking some of my green and just adding more green on there because you're going to need a whole lot <laughs> Hope we have enough for you guys. <laughs> I am tapping it on my palette first. And I'm just adding a little bit of kind of that darker green. And like that. So I am following angles. So as you can see, it, because it is smaller up here, I also small like one thinner up here and then you know I have more area down here to fill in so it'd be thicker there with my sponge 
Yes, the sponge is from Michael's. You can also get it from Walmart. They sell them at Walmart too. You guys are giving me some ideas because I can make like a post that um, I can put links to like where I find things so then you can find them too. Okay, so there, now we have some depth going on here. So I also wanted to add a little bit of this color just on the bottom, kind of just around the edge of some of these areas here. So maybe just like a little bit kind of around here. And it's gonna start to get kind of random. So just to show that there's like an edge here, but you also wanna move it out a little bit into the grass so it's not just sitting there on the edge. At any time, if something's there that you don't like or a color is like too dark or something, just take that original color you had before and just start to um, dim it down. Okay, I'm just gonna wring out my sponge a bit because it's getting kind of full. So if you have different areas of your sponge to use, that's great. If it's um, getting too full of other colors, you're just gonna wanna wring it out. You're probably gonna get pretty dirty. <laughs> and you could always go change your water if it's getting too bucky. <laughs> Please repeat that mix of that green and black. Yeah, sure. Um, so I did it over here on my left side, just underneath the sun. Um, and I started over here, but then I pulled it out. Kind of looks like a triangle here, right? You see that? How it looks like a triangle. So it's just a little bit thinner up here in the shading versus down here. There's just more ground to cover. So I just tapped it in that area up here just to show depth and shadows. And then I added a little bit down here, but we're actually going to add some color in here as well to, to brighten it up as if the sun is like coming in and shining some of these areas. Hope that helped. <laughs> so I'm just getting some green on my sponge. I'm going to tap into some yellow and mix it over here. Some green and yellow. Okay. And I'm going to do that in the middle. In some spots. Just to give it even more color. I also sometimes like to go up into the dark. So just because I put dark there doesn't mean it has to just be dark. I can move up into other colors as well. Just have fun with the sponge. Um, the sponge takes some getting used to, for sure. Um, and again, if you don't have the sponge, I know I said in the beginning, but you can use one of these kind of like crazy wacky brushes and you can just literally do the same thing with an old brush. That's the same thing as the sponge, just in case you didn't have that. Okay, and then if you have any yellow ochre now, um, you can just tap into that. And I'll show you how to make it in a minute. It doesn't look quite the same, but it, you can still kind of get the effect of it. Um, so I just dipped in yellow ochre and I'm just kind of highlighting. I use this color to kind of highlight where some of my shading area is so imagine kind of where those bushes are I just kind of highlighted these areas so just painting upside down but just like that you can also highlight it with yellow anything you like really something that pops out for you and see it was dark all over there but there's still some dark we don't want to lose it you want like a nice balance where it is dark and it's like a little bit light. Just imagine where the kind of rays would shine. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That works too. That's a good idea.
don't overdo the sponging because then, um, you know, that can also make a mess too. So, <laughs> just take a step back from it, right? Up close, it might look a little weird, but you need to step back from it and you'll see like, oh, like there's grass, there's a field, right? Up close, it kind of just looks like, you know, a bunch of colors there, but you got to take that step back. Yeah, it does. Yep. Wasn't my intention, but you know what? It looks like flowers and that's what's cool. So I'm just going to leave them. I am going to use my brush um, that I have here. It's a little round brush. Um, so rounded tip. You can see at the tip of that brush, it's thinner. And I'm just using just green. And I'm just going to pull some of the colors that I have and just kind of make like little frail kind of grasses just here and there. Um, just like so. So at the top, I'll kind of bring that closer. And if it's still wet, it's even better for you because then you can just pull up some of the colors you have. You can try to just pull kind of maybe around the water. Wherever you see, really, it can even be over here. Just kind of creates like the illusion of stems or long other sticks or grasses that are in there. I know you probably can't really see what it's doing, but it just gives it a little, little something. <laughs> there, I'm just pulling out some of that into the water and down here because I don't. There we go. <laughs> okay. So we're actually going to make some little pine trees just up here um and then we'll go to the other side Let's take a little sponge break just got round brushes oh good yeah awesome yeah the brown brushes are really round brushes are really good for like um grass leaves um for these pine trees actually so you'll get to see that as well so you're gonna need green and black out and we're going to do the pine trees and then we'll go to the other side um, to do the sponging again. So we'll take a little sponge break. <laughs> I'm just getting green and black out. Green and black. Just making a dark green. I'm just twirling it around just to make sure it's evenly coated. <laughs> okay, so pine tree. I made two. You can make as many as you want. Basically, I take the very thin tip of this brown brush here, and I just tap the height of where I want the tree. So I just did mine to where about my yellow and pink is. And I just tap that like so so I actually use the brush and just literally tap and then I start to change the direction of the brush and I start to literally just tap again but going out to the side so I tap upwards first like that but then now for these trees I'm just going back and forth so you can think of it um, as like kind of zigzagging but I do keep it very close together and I just tap my trees and keep the ends loose. So my middles of my tree are very kind of full, very tapped in. <laughs> and then the sides are very um, kind of loose where you can see like that loose um, the look, right? Like from the pines here. And I just think of a triangle. So it's thinner at the top, but it's thicker at the bottom. And I just put that right into the grass. So that way it's hiding in there. <laughs> I am using green and black to make that dark green. And you can even use this and kind of just add little that kind of dark green into some random areas if you want. Sometimes I just do that and it breaks up color. You can do a second one of these trees if you're comfortable with it. You can go ahead and do another one. 
another way you can do the trees with this brush is so maybe I'll make this one a little bit smaller so I can mark out where the height is so I, I like to give it a little thin tip on the top of the tree but then I like to make it bushy underneath so even if I just literally did a straight line and I just used the side of the brush and I just started to tap back and forth like this but keeping my middle filled in and my edges soft and loose then that is another way to use this brush for the trees you'll kind of find a way that works for you there's many ways to make these some people use fan brushes to make these trees some people use filberts it really doesn't matter <laughs> Um, sorry, Sally, we, did you see that one or you can make, um, so basically you can like kind of make a line as to where your tree is and then you can, um, just, so I use the brush, um, the round brush to make a line, but then I, um, turn the brush over so it's flat and that's when I can just tap and keep going back and forth like thinking like a zigzag and filling in keeping them in the middle like kind of bushy but then the sides if they you can't tell there's some sides of the pines then you can just kind of tap out the edges a little bit and that creates um it length and variation in there as well and sometimes i just give a little tap at the tops and that helps to thin it <laughs> uh, okay sorry I will try to explain a different way um I'll just where's the piece of paper <laughs> I'll just use the paper because I don't have any space on here okay okay so another way so I just have do you have a round brush are you using a round brush Okay. Kinda. So I'm just going to use this piece of paper. So there's like that horizon line, you know, the grass is here. So if I just, another way that's simple, it's like you can just literally do a line like that. Okay. And then, so I was using the brush straight like from the, um, just up and down. But now, see how I turned my brush on an angle? So I, instead of holding it this way, I'm now holding it on the side. And all I'm doing is thinking of like a zigzag. So thinking of like something like this, there's like that kind of shape that I have, but then I'm just kind of tapping and filling that in. And I'm just using the side at that edge and just tapping literally back and forth and keeping the middle full. And what I mean by full is just I don't see through any of that. And then you can just give it a little tap at the top to create the bushy effect. Another way people do them is like They'll just do a line and then you can do like these like kind of triangle triangular shapes um and then you can tap with the brush as well on an angle that's going down you can just kind of tap in between those triangle to triangle just kind of give a little tap or even some people literally just pull the um kind of like the trees out they just use the edge of the brush and they just pull the bristles um and the pines out so that's kind of like two ways to make them i hope that helped <laughs> you're welcome it takes practice like even if you just practice on a piece of paper until you found a way that works for you is also a good way <laughs> Okay, so yes, I have two pines over here. 
So that side is done. Just gonna, so I'm gonna put that brush in the water and let me know when you guys are ready to go to the other side and we'll do the sponging over there. So I'm just going to re-wet my sponge and wring that out again. Ooh, it's so, the part is messy, so. <laughs> Okay, I'm just wringing it out and making sure it's not soaking. <laughs> yeah, good idea. You could always do the trees later. Like, you can work on the grass over here, and then you can go back to add the trees later. Because you can put those in any time. And you just tap it and tap it and blend it into the grass. You just tap, 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 and put it into the grass. Oh, right. It's actually taking off my ring because I'm going to have paint all in it. <laughs> okay, so now we're on the other side. So we'll just get out that green. So make sure you still have like the green out, um, the black, the yellow, and the um, brown. And I meant to show yellow orca too. Kind of forgot there. I'm sorry about that. So like if you had yellow to make yellow orca, that's kind of a greeny yellow. So just freshen my yellow. And yellow and brown is going to make this color similar to it anyways. So if I have brown and some yellow, and I just mix that together, it's mostly going to be yellow versus brown. And you can even add just a tad of white in there, and that creates like a that um, yellow mustardy color if you didn't have this color here so as you can see it's literally the same so that's a little bit of brown mostly yellow and a tad of white just to lighten it up and that's my mix here and that's the yellow orca so I made it quite similarly <laughs> all the colors started with just those primary colors so <laughs> You can make anything. Just have to learn how to do it. <laughs> okay. I got a little sidetrack there. So that way you have some yellow orca off to the side um, for the future. So we're just going to start with just our green again with the sponge. Okay. So I'm just getting some green out on that sponge and just tapped it on my palette before going on to the canvas, of course. So now I'm just going to start to tap away, fill in these areas. So I'm actually just going to go right across, straight across. And while this is wet, I'm just going to pull, get that um, round brush out again. And I'm just going to use that round brush and pull some of my grasses up while it's kind of a little bit wet. It'll work easier that way. I'm just going to add a little bit into the water there and I'll use that brush. Keep your brush handy so then you can pull it into the water and pull up some grasses too. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to go back to my green and start to tap away. <laughs> just going to close my door over here because it's kind of getting windy in the window. There we go. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome, Rebecca. I really like to use the sponge lately for like grass or anything because it covers so much surface area and it also creates that textured look, 
right, of the grass. So it's kind of like a two in one. Oops, kind of got a little bit of black in there by accident, that's fine. So I'm just cut, putting a base coat on of green first and then we'll start to add in other colors. So you can go a little bit into your water, right? Remember if there's something in your water that you don't like, you know, maybe you wanted to thin it or, you know, give it a different kind of look. Like, see how I went out a little bit into my water here? I made my river kind of give a little dip and a little more of a curve. So just play around in that area. You can shape it however you like. I'm just lifting it up so I can reach down here. There we go. Need a lot of green. Just getting more green up. <laughs> So now what I'm going to do is we're going to add in different color variations. So I'll just show you the original so you can kind of see what I was, what I'm thinking. <laughs> so basically we have that original kind of green color up here, uh, but there's going to be a little bit of kind of black um, green mix in here. And then there's some like kind of like a nice yellowy patch. Um, and then I have a darker and then more of like yellow worker. So. What I'll do now is I'll take that sponge and I'll add a little bit of my green to my black. We're going to get some dark shades in here. Okay, so I'm just sponging that black into the green a little bit. Hopefully you guys have enough space <laughs> for your palette. Okay, and then I'm just kind of going in this area. I'm just imagining some shadows now. So if it's too black, put some green on top of it want to make a dark green. Okay, so I'm going to say there's some kind of dark here. You know, this could be that thin grass at the top hitting the light, but then here would be like the shadow. And then I'm going to bring it to the end and just move it up a little bit just to give a different variation. Okay, so I just want underneath of those kind of grasses that we pulled up here. And just before it gets too dry, take that round brush actually and just pull in some of that um, little bit of green into your water. Use a little um, of the water <laughs> to pull it into the water if you need to. There we go. It's kind of just lightly put in. And later on too, if like there's something in your water that you want to touch up, you can. Like if you ended up like wanting to add pink or something again in an area, uh, then you could do that. Okay, so like if I had like added pink in here later, you could do that. Just to kind of show you what you can do. <laughs> but that was too dark, so. Sorry, I kind of went a little bit random there, but. I've seen a spot that I wanted to add pink in my water, so I did, but I'll wait till the end to do that. You can kind of touch up water at the end. Okay, so I still have that dark green on my sponge. So it's just the green and the black. And I'm going to go now from this edge on my right side, and I'm going to imagine it going down to meet the very end of um, the very bottom of my water here. Okay, so I'm basically going to be making like a hill from here to here. So that's the end of it, and it's going to go in there. 
So what I'm doing is I'm just tapping along, creating like a little bit of a hill here. Just like that. There we go. So now you can see a division where there is, it's gonna be lighter in here, shadow, there's a hill, and then it's gonna be a different color over here. So it just is bringing depth. Okay, so that's my dark color. You can take a look on this side, you know, see if you wanna add any dark over there. Now that it's dried, maybe you need to touch something up while you still have it. That's the fun with these sponges, you can kinda jump around. <laughs> Um, oh, speaking of jumping, I was imagining splashing when you, when I was reading that. So it says, would you demo how to create splashes in, in the river over the rocks, over rocks? Yeah, sure. I can put a couple rocks in here. That'd be cool. It's a good idea. I'll put that in after we get the grass. Okay. So now I'm going to just use a different size of side of my sponge. And I'm just going to get green and some yellow out. So I got yellow and I'm just going to add some green. <laughs> okay. So yellow and green, just make a nice light green. And I'm going to put that in this area here and brighten that up from the sun. I'm going to need more yellow to make it brighter. The more yellow it is, the brighter it'll be, right? So it's up to you kind of what the shading you want it to be. All of our paints colors are going to be different unless you're using the exact paint as me, but <laughs> even then it'll still be different. All of our art is going to be unique in its own way. Um, I love that idea with art where we're all on here painting the same painting and, and I'm teaching the instructions, but yet we're all going to have our own type of art like it's going to be slightly different everyone just has their own style and you don't know it but we all have it <laughs> painting is just so relaxing too <laughs> so now that i added it brighter here i actually just want to bring over some of my yellow just on this side too because i didn't get it as yellow over here as i wanted because it was just maybe too wet so sometimes you need to go back and just touch up the spot with the color, that's totally fine. So yeah, I, I like just to brighten that up just a little bit there, so. There we go. And if you know, you thought, oh no, it got too bright, then put some of that dark back in or put some of that green back in, right? You can easily um, change that. So yeah, I just wanted to add a little yellow there. Good. So then on this side, I'm gonna take some my green. So now if you have yellow, that yellow, brown, white mix to make the yellow worker, or if you just have yellow worker, we're gonna add some down here. So yellow worker is this color here, that mustardy color. So how to make that is just brown, um, mostly yellow, and then like a little bit of white, and I just stirred it around and it made um, yellow worker. So my color that I made was here. And that was yellow orchard. So it's a little bit darker, so I could just brighten it up a bit with more yellow. You just kind of play around with that. Just a bonus. Okay, so now I'm just putting some of that yellow orchard color over here. And because my green dried there, I'm going to actually just go over with the green just so it kind of blends in easier. So now I'm just putting some green in here. Oops, got a little bit of other colors there, but that's fine. My goal was to get green there, but I got some brown, which is fine. So I had to move it like that because I couldn't sponge in the corner. There. 
So I meant to put green there, but I got brown, but that's fine because it looks cool. Just was going over some of the color there because it was drying just to give it a little boost of kind of brings it out a little bit more. There, and just kind of look over it and see if there's any other areas that you could add any other color to it. Like, does it need to be brighter somewhere? Does it need to be darker somewhere? Is there like a good balance in different color variation? Um, that's just something to kind of keep in mind and to look for. And you're welcome to do other trees over here if you'd like, but I'm just going to keep mine to the original, um, to the best of my ability. And, uh, yeah. And then sometimes I just take the sponge and literally just kind of tap everywhere. <laughs> as long as there's no paint, like if I just use like a side like this and just tapped it around and that just ties in some areas kind of blends it a bit. I'm noticing on this side, I wanted it to be a little darker here. There we go. So yeah, take a step back from yours and you'll, you'll see what you need. So make sure you don't see like lines with the color. Like, you know how I said to go from here to here with that dark green? You can't really tell that I did like you know there's a hill there but you don't see like a direct line of that color right there is other colors that got pulled into it from putting that yellow here with the yellow orchid so just make sure there's some different um, colors just on, on top of it to show that it's not just the line if that happened that's just a little Tip. I'm just trying to think um, as to what could be happening, imagining that I'm there with you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's gonna be it for there, and we'll put it, we'll put in some cute little flowers and stuff too next. So you can just put your sponge in the water. I'm gonna stop mine because I don't want to like overdo it. So that's why it's really important just to take a step back and see where you're at. <laughs> no, 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 touch it. <laughs> I was tempted. <laughs> I'm just putting all my brushes in the water because I feel like they're going to dry out if I don't. So, there we go. All right, look at my hands from the sponge. <laughs> all right, so next is just adding a couple little flowers in. And then I can add in a couple of those rocks um, that I was asked as well that I could demonstrate as a little, it's a little bonus that's not in the original, but I'm totally cool with adding in other things because that's what art is about. If there's something you want to add to this painting or take away from this painting, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, now is also a great time to go back and see like, you know, maybe up here, like now that these clouds are dry, do they need another layer? Like, do they need to be a little bit brighter? I'm thinking mine just need a touch up of white. So I can do that. Like with just grabbing another clean brush. Um, I'll use a flat again. You can also use a filbert, which is something round, kind of round edged. Thanks Jackie. And I'm just going to touch up my clouds and then do some flowers just so this can dry a little bit before putting flowers on. Just because um, it'll just blend in if you do it while it's too wet. So kind of let it dry a little bit. If you need to touch up your clouds, you can. So I just got out a fresh, clean brush. Any brush is literally fine. Um, and it's dry, so I'm not wetting it. Direct feed from Facebook is very bad. Oh. Is it not like coming in for you very clear? Maybe the video when I'm done will be a little clearer. Sorry about that. Okay, so I just have like my dry brush, it's just a flat brush. And what I'm gonna do is just do that same thing on the clouds and just push and twirl it on where I have. And that is just going to brighten them up. And you might not even need to do it in all the same areas, right? Just in, in just uh, in some spots is fine too. That's just a little little something that you could do up here, if needed. If there are, if you like them where they are, 
uh, then don't don't worry and don't touch them. <laughs> And I kind of just gave it a little more, kind of helped it stand out a little bit. Oh good, I'm glad it's clear. Yeah, you know, sometimes Facebook can go in and out, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to clean that brush off now. And just going to make some little stems to where I want my flowers to be. Now this is totally all up to you. I'll just show you the original so you can see. I didn't have a lot. But on my side where my trees are, I just did a couple little stems and then I just did a little dab with where the color is. And then same with over here. I kind of did a couple growing up there and a couple here. So it's really up to you where you want your flowers to be and what color you want them to be. Um, just have fun with that. <laughs> so I'm just going to use dark green or even just black, something that'll show up and stand up on out of these colors you have and I'll just use that flat brush because it's already straight right flat brush is already a straight line so I'll use that to my advantage and I'll just pull some straight stra stems upward um, in some areas just need some water in here. and maybe I'll put some stems over here they're very random they're just gonna grow wherever so. I like having some come out by the water, so I just kind of made some going out off the edge, kind of like little grasses here, but then they're going to have flowers on them. Making this area a little bit bigger, but then I'll just pull out some little stems areas. I'm just kind of matching that color because I, what I was doing there is I was pulling out my land a bit more to, to kind of match in with this area. So. There. And then I made the flowers just with a round brush, um, which is the one with the thin tip because it's nice and thin at the top. So it's going to be easy for me to just put flowers wherever. So <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll do some purple flowers. So I just mix red and blue. Red and blue. Maybe a little white to brighten them up. Oh yeah. There's nice purple. Right there. Yeah, I think purple would look good. You're right. And I just tap. I kind of think of them like in little, like, they're just far away, some of them. So you can give them detail if you want. I just like to make them kind of like those field flowers. Little lilacs. I believe they're called or the lavenders <laughs> you don't have to make them all purple you can make some of them different variations so, you know maybe now I'll make some more of a pink they're kind of just buried in there like I like these up here because it looks like flowers so I'm actually just putting like a little bit of a center in some of them so it looks like a flower up there can you see that a little bit the lighting's not the best to show the flowers. <laughs> you can do yellow flowers, any color flowers you want. Put them wherever you like. I try to give the color different colors in the flower so it's not just one color. trying to make them a little brighter. Maybe I'll use that yellow worker over here. And just take um, steps back, right? 
Do I need a flower there? Maybe you're getting flower crazy and you're like just tapping away, but maybe think, do I really need a flower there or should I stop? So, <laughs> Cause I'm thinking that and I'm still tapping. So I'm just telling you guys. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to call that my flowers because I don't want to overdo it. But if you want a whole lot of flowers in there, then you go for it. This is your painting, so whatever you like, whatever looks best for you and whatever feels good for you. And then hang these up on the wall and brighten your days. with The beautiful sunrise or sunset. The weather's finally getting warmer. Um, we're in, in Canada anyways. <laughs> and, uh, so that's, that's always nice. Yeah, I'm still going on the flowers. I know I said to stop, but I'm still going. <laughs> I just wanted this to be a little brighter. There we go. It's like a really big flower. There. If there's a flower you didn't like, put some dark green on it and cover it up. Or get out the sponge and tap it away. You can always you can always go back and fix it, right? Like over there, kind of got too much flower, so I just put some green back and I covered that up. And anywhere else I see kind of where I'd want some green again. But yeah, okay. I'm gonna stop. So now I will show you. So this that's all my instructions for um, the country scene. So as you can see. Um, they're slightly similar, but they're also different. Um, cause that's what art is. Even though I created this one, you know, every time that you make art, it's going to be different. So that's what I love about it. <laughs> I actually like this river better than that one. So cool. <laughs> um, I will have to go back and do flowers. Oh yeah, no problem. Take your time. So yeah, um, I'm done for instruction for that. So you are welcome um, to head on with your evening and you know, got work and all that fun stuff tomorrow, potentially, depending on what's going on in your life. Um, but yeah, I can, I'm going to show a quick little um, demo of some rocks just kind of in the water as requested um, as like a little bonus if you are wanting to do that. So I just have some black. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes they turn out better when you do them more. Because so. every time there's always a different way. So I just have black and white out. Just to make some rocks. I'm going to make some gray. So I'm just using black with a little bit of white to make some gray. I'm just going to show you a little bit of a kind of rock with a little splash on it. Okay, you can put it anywhere you want. And this is just a bonus. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. <laughs> I'm going to say maybe I'll put a couple of clustered little rocks over here on the larger part of my water. So the bottom of the rock will be a line, like a, a line, you know, a straight line. Um, and then I'll make a little half circle on it, just a little curve. It's kind of small, so I'm going to bring it closer. I'm going to make a bunch of these clusters of just little rocks. Some of them can be pointed too. So like, you know, maybe somewhere more triangular, just not a direct triangle. As long as the bottom of your rock is straight, the, the top of your rock can have as much detail as you want. Another key with making a cluster of rocks is um, you're going to want the rocks that are going up towards the smaller part of the water, right? toward the horizon, they're going to be smaller. So they're going to be bigger here. They're going to get smaller up there. So maybe I'll a couple small ones up here. Just making a bunch of clusters. Maybe I'll just have one big one kind of going off the edge of the canvas here. Okay, so then once you have that, um, take that white to so you clean your brush first. Just gonna make gray. <laughs> clean that off and get some white. And you're gonna wanna put um, a little bit of a highlight 
underneath of the rock. So it's, I'll show you it up close, just what I have so you can see. Um, and then underneath, I'm just using white and I'm just going to pull. So forgive me because I'm holding it. So it's a little tricky. And that was too much water on my brush. So I'll just kind of tap that away. Okay, so I'm just getting some white. I'm trying that again. <laughs> and underneath of the rock is just going to have a little bit of a white kind of shimmer, right? Because it's showing that the rock is in the water. Oh, and then, yeah, don't forget, like, if you see any colors you want to put in your water again, you can do that too. So just a little bit of a shimmer underneath. I'll bring it closer because I know you would not be able to see that. And then on top of the rock, especially this big one, I'll give it a highlight. So I'm just using that um, top of the round brush and just giving it a little bit of a highlight. Imagining the sun hitting the top. And I also went down into the middle. So it is on the edge of the rock, but I went down into the middle in one part so it shows like depth on the rock. like how it's hitting other areas. Advance, can you get an advanced notification? Um, I don't know, I don't think there's a way for me to set that up. That would be something you would have to um, click on my page and whenever there, I go live, there's like a button that pops up like, um, get all live notifications. Um, from this from my page and that should help you become aware of when I am going live And just keep an eye out. I do have other events coming up in the future. I actually have One coming up on Monday. I'm calling it mystery live So you don't know what you're painting yet, but I have put in the event for Monday coming um, What you're gonna need for it and it starts at 7 as well Eastern Standard Time Zone um, and that video will be up, of course, if you cannot make the live, as always. Um, and then, yeah, I also am doing a, another live in May of a waterfall. And I'm also doing another Zoom class, um, which is a paid event, but it shows up on Facebook as free. So I apologize about the confusion. It's just Facebook doesn't let me put that. Um, without it like without the money going to Facebook like it's really weird it doesn't pay me so I do apologize for that confusion um but anyways there is a zoom coming up so that way I can see you and you can see me and we can like actually talk and I can so if there is like a something you needed help with I could literally see your screen and, and you can show hold up your painting on zoom right um and I can be like yeah do this so I just like doing that. Um, it's just, you know, and whether there's like um, something a little more that needs more steps to it, I like to do it on Zoom so that I can help you and so we can have the best possible outcome. <laughs> so yeah, I hope that helps. Um, is This is great. How do we send a, you a tip? Oh, thanks. Thanks so much for asking. Um, so I accept tips via email transfer. Um, I have my email on my page. I can also write it in this here for you. Um, let me see. Oh, I can. So my email is painting. So I'll put this here. You can email transfer me um, a, a tip, but obviously no obligations, everybody. I don't expect it. Um, I just like to do this for fun and for to provide you guys something to do and look forward to and getting creative is so good for our mental health and our overall wellness so <laughs> I love to do it so I'm just attaching my email to the feed um, here for e-transfers and I also um, accept PayPal as well so if you want that let me know too okay so sorry I got sidetracked so then anywhere there's a like a little rock and you just kind of put a little bit of a highlight on it. So it's kind of tricky with these like tiny baby rocks. So even if you had a really kind of detailed small brush, I just use the very edge, like the very thin tip of my um, round brush here. I'm losing my words. See that? 
I am in Canada. Are you in Canada? <laughs> if you are in Canada, then yes, you can do e-transfers. If you're not in Canada, then PayPal works best for um, internationally, internationally paying. So with Zooms, when I do those Zoom classes, um, I do accept email transfer or PayPal as well. Yep, just check out my events and I always put in the description what it is and if there is a cost. But anything that's live is never a cost and it's just free. <laughs> oh, you! I have managed to stay awake now. It's nearly 2 a.m. Ooh! Oh, good, good, good. Hope you get some rest. If you want a little splash on the rock. Sorry, I keep getting distracted. <laughs> I love all the comments though, don't get me wrong. If you want a little splash, literally, it's just like a little kind of tap. So I'm just getting some fresh white. If you want to splash on the rock, you just do like a little tap kind of above it. It just kind of creates like that um, envision of a splash, like maybe something around it is splashed. So just little like white taps. It might be a little tricky to see. I just kind of went around the rock and just gave it a little, little tap. Depends on how busy your water is. Like if your water is rapidly moving quickly, then your want splashes. But if, if it's not moving too fast, it's a calm water, then I would just put it underneath like um, the water and just have a white little line. It's mostly watered down though, that line. Like you don't want it to be a super bold white line under the rock. You just want it to be like watered down white underneath of it. So it's not bold. <laughs> And then, yeah, I don't want to touch the water too much up here though, so I'll just, I'll just stop up there. Okay, so yeah, that's a little bonus, a couple little rocks down there. <laughs> so yeah, thanks so much, guys. It's so nice to come on tonight. I'll catch up with my comments. Mm -mm -mm. I will be doing this painting because I think I might manage with using sponge and the blending method. It's good, so glad to hear. If you need help, just message me on this page and I will um, help you out there. Just like we can send pictures and whatnot and that'll help. So, yay. All right. So that's all that I have for you guys tonight. So I'll let you all carry on with your evening and get some rest. I know we're all in different time zones here. So it is 8.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right now. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm so glad you loved my teaching. I, It's so good to hear because I am self-taught and, you know, I just teach the way that I'm imagining um, being taught myself. That's how I teach. And then I just like, kind of envision being there with you. Um, and because I, have, I do in-person classes too, because I have had experience with that, then I can also kind of see like that common type of questions or things that could go on that I could help out with in the future too <laughs> you're welcome so yeah thanks so much for watching everybody i appreciate you all please share my page spread the news <laughs> um i offer my free lives um once a month for sure i've been doing this since last march um one every month for free and then i usually like to throw in a zoom here and there just to kind of give that have that personal connection and see and experience talking with the people who are on my page, which is always nice. Um, and then, yeah, sometimes I do like two lives in a month too. So just depends on what's going on. <laughs> so yeah, Monday is our mystery class. And then in May I have another live that's a waterfall. And I have a Zoom class coming up, two Zoom classes coming up and they're both beach related because I'm obsessed with the beach. So feel free to check those out too. <laughs> I'll just show you this. I'll show you the waterfall one. It's actually going to be a kind of a textured waterfall. So that's kind of, it's tall. It's a very long canvas. <laughs> so it's very interesting. I was trying like, I actually use the palette knife to make this kind of textured look. So I'll be teaching this class. I believe it's May the 7th. I'm going live for this one. And then I'm using palette knives, which are something that looks like this. Or like this. <laughs> There's many palette knives. 
Thank you. So yeah, that'll be coming up May 7th. Something different, um, some textured, how to learn some textured look and how to create a waterfall too, which is always fun. It's an abstract waterfall. So. <laughs> abstract art is always cool too. All right. So yeah, thanks again. And I will see you all later. I would love it if you all, and if you feel inclined to please post your picture of your finished product. You can do it like directly in this event here. You can post it directly on my wall. And what really helps my page grow is sharing. And if you um, would like, you could also leave a review on my page. Um, that would be awesome as well. I always appreciate the feedback. Um, helps me become a better teacher and to see what people need, of course. What kind of paint do I use with the palette? Oh, um, I just used acrylic paint. <laughs> All right. So yeah, send, post those pictures and I will see you all again. So thanks again for watching and have a great evening. Good night. Bye.